Hello, my name is Blake and this is Keith. Um, he has been our guide as we've been finding you. It's a journey of recovering our heart. And we've been in this series discussing how God has made us, how we were made for relationship. And the tools that God has given us are feelings. And these feelings lead us into these amazing gifts if we're willing to put the work in with time. And so today's feeling we're gonna be discussing is fear. Will you walk us through this? Yeah. So our knee-jerk reaction is fear bad, fear, yeah. right? In fear. fact, all of the emotions is, oh, those are all negative. But we are unlearning them that they're not negative. They're actually neutral. They just are. We've put, in, we've put a judgment upon them about being negative. So in fact, maybe we brought this up in the feelings part, but the part of the brain that feels fear is the same part of the brain that controls my breath. I don't go, that's a bad breath. Right, I don't judge my heart for beating. No. I don't judge my lungs for breathing. So why do I judge my emotions and my limbic system for doing what they're supposed to do? So there is a healthy fear, but the fear that we are talking about is the impairment of the unhealthy fear relationally and, and spiritually. Uh, fear is a threat of losing my identity. It, it is my brain doing its job of predicting pain. And it will always point me to a need of, I need help, or I need protection, or I need refuge or safety, like emotional, relational safety. Um, so the gift that I get when I do that work of facing and confronting my fear is faith and wisdom. And so just like in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, where it says, For by grace you've been saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. My fear grows, my faith grows because I first felt fear. The same thing happens in my sanctification, where for by grace are you sanctified through faith. I grow relationally, my relationship with God, when I step into faith, I risk believing what in fact, he says verse is true. 10 continues that thought. Yeah. It's, it's, I am this masterpiece, and I'm supposed to walk in it. Yeah. And so I, I agree with you that, that that faith that fear brings us to, into is that walking out the wisdom that we have gained in that relationship. Yeah. And so there the uh, there's a progression here about baby faith equals hope plus risk of being a relational blessing. And, and so I continue to, do you remember when we talked about the amygdala and the left brain and the right brain hemispheres? Well, my left brain amygdala builds this relational social component of when was the last time that I cried out and reached out for relationship during my need for help and for protection and safety? And my left brain and right brain need to begin talking to each other. But whenever I feel this fear, I will tend to um, just react in the survival mode. And I'm not actually thinking about it. I'm just reacting. And so fear is a key emotion. And slowing it down and sitting in the fear brings upon this faith and wisdom. So I want to, do you want to talk a little bit about healthy fear as well? Like you've just... Yeah, because... Because I think so many of us, we think of unhealthy fear, which yeah. is a lot of us is anxiety, right? Like we're, we're, we're afraid of everything. Mm. Um, we have to learn how to fear. Um, being a parent of five kids, you know, like you see these kids and they're, and they're brought into life not fearing anything because as, as you have been saying that we fear something reoccurring. You can't fear something that you don't know, right? Like a child is not afraid of drowning because they've never jumped into the deep end and gone into the deep. We have. So when we walk our kid to the pool, we're like, oh, please do not jump in the deep end without me or without this. And so it reminds me um, of when we were, we were living in Ethiopia. And for many of us, when we deal with fire, it's oh, keep the kid away. They're going to get burnt. Why? Because we know fire is hot and they don't. And I'll never forget what this, this Ethiopian lady did because for them, fire isn't something you enjoy at a campsite. Mm. It is everyday life. And so their kids can't avoid it. And if they don't teach their kids healthy fear at the beginning, like we, we don't, I don't teach my kid how to fear fire because they don't see it enough. And so what she did was that she lovingly took my son's hand. And at the time, my son was speech impaired, which means he can communicate anything. Mm -hmm. 
So even he understood when she lovingly took his hand, walked him to the fire, he felt the warmth of it. He felt the, 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 the good things that could come from the fire. And then she took him close enough with his hand to feel, I don't like this. And in that moment, he learned wisdom. I don't want to touch this. Instead of her screaming and saying, don't touch it, don't touch it, she walked him through it. And now he has the wisdom to know, don't touch fire. And at a, at a, at a young, young age, even though he couldn't communicate, I trusted him around fire. It was, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. And it blew me away of like, this is how we have to teach people. Beautiful. She intuitively met his need for guidance. Yeah. Yeah. And so if, if we relationally experience wounds, then we're going to have relational fears. And so there is where my impairments start. Like you said, I'm not afraid of the unknown. I'm afraid of a reoccurrence of something. And so that feeling of dread is actually my scanning for some kind of object to control. That's what anxiety is. I'll have this internal response of, I need to control my environment so that I can be okay because I don't want to re-experience something that I've already experienced. So fear is a good thing. I'm actually looking for people who are afraid because that's going to bring a wisdom within that group. In fact, I don't want to fly with a pilot who's not afraid. Yeah. I, don't want, I don't want relationships with anybody who are, are not healthy fear afraid. Yeah. Because if you don't know, if you're, not, if you're not afraid, then you don't know who you are. And then you're not valuing you. And that means you're not going to value those people who are underneath you. That, that pilot who goes through his checklist because he's got a healthy fear, I can fly with that guy. He's going to be a good steward of what he's been given. He, he understands his, his limitations. Right. And, and I kind of, just to, to speak into this, we were talking about this, is like that's where we're at right now as a culture is that we're trying to figure out what is true truth, like what is wisdom, and so for many of us, we're, we're throwing out, we're, de we're deconstructing, and we're saying, well, we don't need to listen to God's truth. Mm. I can get wisdom as long as it doesn't hurt someone else, um, as long as you know it makes me happy. But the problem is, it's just like that pilot. If that pilot's like, well, the horizon is this, and that's not what the horizon is, mm. he crashes and burns. Yeah. And for many of us, we need to have that healthy fear. That's why the verse says, the beginning of wisdom is fear of God. Yeah. And we need that truth that's outside of us, not just what we're feeling in the situation. We need someone outside to go, this is what is true. Yeah, because God actually knows me better than I know me, especially with all my blind spots and, and my denial or my grandiosity. I can't or won't see the truth about me, about how that behavior has actually harmed me, and I'm busy devaluing me. So... Uh, the impairment of the isolation attached to fear is rage. And we talked a little bit about this in the anger video as well. And so how different anger is from rage. But notice this, my rage is my effort to control my environment so that I can be okay on the inside. Unfortunately, the most common feature in all of environments are people. So I end up trying to control people so that I can be okay. And that's the core of my codependency. I, and there's lo lots of different ways of how we can do that. So outwardly, I might get big and rage on you to control you, or I could actually rage inwardly on myself and, and allow that toxic shame, that tone of self-condemnation to just beat me up where I will take that one down position and I'll just be small so that you can be big. And I, I've learned to subordinate myself. And people, humans cannot tolerate subordinating their worth beneath another. It just doesn't work for us. And so as we walk through this, again, as we end all of this, it's, it's, it's how do we experience this? How do we get the gifts? How do we, how do we not live in this isolation and impairment? Because again, we are made for relationship. And in the last couple... Can I add something? Yeah, please. Well, an, so another component of rage is this getting small and quiet. I might actually be raging on you with my silent treatment. Yeah, I'm going to get back at you. Yeah. And I think it's interesting as, as if you think about that, 
um, in both ways, it's killing the relationship. Yeah. Because if I get so big, you don't matter. Yeah. And then it's, I get so small, I'm not going to give you me. Yeah. So both ways, the relationship dies. And in all of those scenarios, I'm not telling the truth about how afraid I am. And this interweaves with guilt when we get there because you can identify that behavior. I did actually do that, and I even meant to because I was so afraid. Awesome. So what we need to ask ourselves is, have you ever risked trusting someone even though you felt fear? If so, what happened? What did you feel as a result of risking that trust? So again, fear, is this going to happen again? What happened? Number two, what about trusting another person scares you? And that's why fear is so important to give you wisdom. Because here's the thing, don't trust everybody. Yeah. Because they, and, and that's what's so important, is that learning who do I trust? Yeah. Who do I open? That impairment of I trust everyone. Yeah. Oh, don't do that. Beautiful, because wisdom is all about timing and the discernment. So these kind of start interlocking, interweaving with other emotions. I need to be able to recognize hurt and recognize harm. That gives me some wisdom about that person's not safe relationally for me. And then lastly, in what ways has fear helped you or helped you value yourself with good decisions? At the end of the day, um, we, we've talked about this, is that you were made for a relationship. And we talk a lot about with others. We talk a lot about, about God. But you need to find you. Mm-hmm. And that's why this series is so important. If you do not find you, you're, you will not be able to have a relationship with God and others. Yeah. So we want to encourage you to, to dive in, have the, the, the faith and the courage to stick with us, to dive into these feelings, to self-reflect, Um, And at the same time, we're doing it with you. This is not something that, oh, I did this a year ago and now I'm good. Yeah. And so we hope that this is a series that blesses you and we wanna encourage you to stay faithful and we will see you in the next video.